Magnetic Current by Edward Litskownin, Rockgate, Homestead, Florida. Narrated by Adam Bull. This writing is lined up, so when you read it, you look east. And all the description you will read about magnetic current, it will be just as good for your electricity. Following is the result of my two years experiment with magnets at Rock Gate. 17 miles southwest from Miami, Florida, between 25th and 26th latitude and 80th and 81st longitude west. First, I will describe what a magnet is. You have seen straight bar magnets, U-shaped magnets, sphere or ball magnets, and Alnico magnets in many shapes, and usually a hole in the middle. In all magnets, one end of the metal is North Pole, and the other South Pole, and those which have no end, one side is North Pole and the other South Pole. Now, about the sphere magnet. If you have a strong magnet, you can change the poles in the sphere in any side you want, or take the poles out so the sphere will not be a magnet anymore. From this, you can see the magnet can be shifted and concentrated. And also you can see the metal is not the real magnet. The real magnet is the substance that is circulating in the metal. Each particle in the substance is an individual magnet by itself and both North and South Pole individual magnets. They are so small that they can pass through everything. In fact, they can pass through the metal easier than through air. They are in constant motion. They are running one kind of magnets against the other kind and, if guided in the right channels, they possess perpetual power. The North and South Pole magnets, they are the cosmic force. They hold together this Earth and everything on it. Each North and South Pole magnet is equal in strength, but the strength of each individual magnet doesn't amount to anything. To be of practical use, they will have to be in great numbers. In permanent magnets, they are circulating in the metal in great numbers, and they circulate in the following way. Each kind of the magnets are coming out of their own end of the pole, and are running around, and are running in the other end of the pole, and back to its own end, and then over and over again. All the individual magnets do not run around. Some run away and never come back, but new ones take their place. The Earth itself is a great big magnet. In general, these North and South Pole individual magnets are circulating in the same way as in the permanent magnet metal. The North Pole individual magnets are coming out of the Earth's South Pole and are running around in the Earth's North Pole and back to its own pole. And the South Pole individual magnets are coming out of the Earth's North Pole and are running around and in the Earth's South Pole and back to its own end. Then, both North and South Pole individual magnets start to run over and over again. In a permanent magnet bar, between the poles there is a semi-neutral part, where there is not much going in or out. But on the Earth, there is no place where the magnets are not going in or out. But the magnets are running in and out at pole ends more than the equator. Now you get the equipment. And I will tell you, so you can see for yourself, that it is in the way I have told. Get a permanent magnet bar, four inches long, a U-shaped magnet that is strong enough to lift from 10 to 20 pounds, an Alnico magnet about three inches long, two and one half inches wide, one inch thick, hole in the middle and poles in each end, several feet in length of hard steel fishing line, Line, when it is not in coil, it stays straight, and a soft steel welding rod, one eighth of an inch thick, and three feet long. From the fishing wire and the welding rod, you will make magnets or compasses, and if you hang them up in fine threads by middle, and keep them there, they will be permanent magnets. When you are making a magnet pole on the welding rod, use a U-shaped magnet, self pole magnet to make North Pole magnet in the rod, and use U-shaped North Pole magnet to make South Pole magnet in the rod. You can drag the magnet over the rod from end to end, but never stop in the middle. 
If you stop in the middle, there will be an extra pole, so it will disturb the magnet's circulation. Use iron filings to test the rod, if there is any magnets in the middle, and if there is, the filings will cling to it. Then drag the permanent magnet over the rod and it will take it out. To take the magnet out from rod ends, approach or touch the rod end with the same kind of magnet that is in the rod. By dipping the rod ends in iron filings, you will see how it works. Break three pieces of steel fishing line just long enough to go in between the two poles of the U-shaped permanent magnet. Put them endwise between the two poles and take them out. Hang one by middle with fine thread and hang it up in east side of the room where there is no other magnet or metal around. Now you will have a permanent magnet or compass to test the polarity in other magnets. For more delicate use, hang the magnet in spider web. To test the strength of a magnet, use iron filings. Put the U-shaped permanent magnet two feet west from the hanging magnet. Hold the north pole magnet in level with the hanging magnet. Then you will see that the south pole of the hanging magnet is turning to you and the north pole magnet away from you. Now put the south pole permanent magnet pole in the same level. This time the north pole magnet will turn to you and south pole magnet away from you. This experiment shows two things. One, that magnets can be sent out in straight streams, and the other, whatever kind of magnets you are sending out, the other kind of magnets are coming back to you. Take two pieces of steel fishing line wire, put them in a U-shaped magnet, hold a little while, take them out, bend a little back in one end and hang them up and make it so that one magnet's lower end is north pole magnet and the other south pole magnet. Make it so they hang three inches apart. Put north pole north side and south pole south side. Now take the four inch long permanent magnet bar, hold north pole in the north side and south pole in the south side, raise slowly up to the two hanging magnets, then you will see that the hanging magnets are closing up. Now reverse. Put north pole of bar magnet south side and south pole north side. This time when the bar magnet approaches the hanging magnets will spread out. This experiment shows that north and south pole magnets are equal in strength and that the streams of the individual magnets are running one kind of magnets against the other kind. Cut a strip of tin can about two inches wide and a foot long. Put the north pole of the U-shaped magnet on top of the strip and dip the lower end in iron filings and see how much it lifts. Now put the south pole on top and see how much it lifts. Change several times, then you will see that the north pole lifts more than the south pole. Now put the north pole magnet under the iron filing box and see how much it pushes up. Now change, put the south pole magnet under the box and see how much it pushes up. Do this several times, then you will see that the south pole magnet pushes up more than the north pole magnet. This experiment shows again that on level ground the magnets are equal in strength. Now take the three foot long soft steel welding rod. It's already magnetized as a permanent magnet. Hang it in a fine thread so it is in level. Now measure each and you will see that the south end is longer. In my location at Rock Gate, between 25th and 26th latitude and 80th, 80th and 81st longitude west, in 3 foot long magnet the south pole end is about a sixteenth of an inch longer. Farther north it should be longer yet, but at equator both ends of the magnet should be equal in length. In Earth's south hemisphere the north pole end of the magnet should be longer. All my hanging magnets or compasses, they never point to the Earth's magnetic pole, neither to the geographical pole. They point a little northeast. The only reason I can figure out why they point in that way is, looking from the same geographical meridian the North Magnetic Pole is on, the South Magnetic Pole is 115 longitudes west from it. In rough estimation, the Earth's South Magnetic pole is 260 miles west from the same meridian the Earth's north magnetic pole is on. 
that causes the north and south pole magnets to run in northeast and south.